It's day 73. We're going to look at a different language altogether for two lessons. This is your HTML crash course. So what is HTML? Well, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and is the language that web pages are written in. Each page is constructed out of a bunch of tags that tell the page how to render. In other words, your web browser looks at web page code and goes, oh, I see, this should be a heading, this should go here. Oh, this is an image. I best put that image here at the width and the height that you specify. It's a markdown language, which means that we're specifying to the computer how the page should look when it's rendered. When you start an HTML REPL, you get this index.html file as the first thing, and you get a bunch of boilerplate code. And excitingly, instead of getting our console on the right hand side, we've got a web view so we can see exactly what that page is showing. Now we don't need to click the play button every single time we want to see the contents of this page. We can click this refresh button to see the changes that we've made. Firstly, let's just try customizing this page. Scroll down to where it says hello world in the code, delete that and change it to something a bit more exciting. And if I click the refresh button, you should see the text change on the web view. So brilliant, you've written your first website. But what do all these tags mean? Well, Let's start by deleting everything and building a simple page from scratch. All tags in HTML are composed of chevrons, which are the pointy brackets. The pointy brackets contain a command and between the tag and the closing tag is what that command is all about. Every web page needs to start off by saying this is what the page is. And so everyone needs to start with an HTML tag. You'll see as I finish my tag, Replit always suggests for me a closing tag. And my good practice is always just pop a few enters in there if you're doing something like HTML. Because between those two tags, between the opening and the closing tag, that tells us what is going to be in the page. I'm now going to add in some invisible parts of the page. These are not going to be shown in the web view, but they are really important. All of this takes place in the head. Now the head, of your web page is going to be the things that aren't seen by your user. They're going to be things like information about how the page should look, how it should display on iPads, keywords, but the important one that we really, really care about is going to be the title. That's what's going to appear in the tab when we open this full screen. Between these two tags, I'm going to write the title of my web page. Now, if I refresh this at the moment over here, there's nothing going on. But one of the superpowers that Replit has over any other development environment for making websites is that this website is already on the internet. This website address here will take you straight there. Or alternatively, you can click this button to open that page in its own tab. Now, with the tabs on, you can see that Dave's World of Baldies is in that tab. So that title field is what's going to be displayed in the tab or on the toolbar or wherever your web browser is trying to tell you that's what's on this page. Try not to leave it blank because you'll get the amazing untitled page appearing, which no one wants to see, let's be honest. And of course, if the invisible stuff is ahead, then the visible stuff is the body. Body is another one where I put a few more enters in there just to make sure you've got some space for everything you want to do. Anything that should be visible should be written in here. And here's where we get to some really important things about how a web browser works. Because a web browser is designed to be very forgiving. We've spent the last 72 days working directly in Python. When we had an error in Python, the Python interpreter wasn't nice to us. It properly threw its toys out the pram and had a little cry in the corner. A web browser is a very different kettle of fish. It is designed to be nice to you. So if the page has broken code, it doesn't just go, nah, sorry. It goes, right, let's see what you should have done. I'm going to put some broken code in here and the web browser will actually do it. Nothing on your page should be outside of a tag. So even text, even a chunk of text should have its own tag. If I just put broken code here, that code is technically wrong. But if I refresh, sticks it in. So you do have to be careful with how you build a page. 
A page could show up perfectly well in your web browser, but if it's got broken code, it may show up differently in another web browser, which is why we need to understand how the tags work. The first tag I'm going to show you is for headings. This is an H tag. You can see there that the moment I click it, I get suggested a bunch of H's and it's the numbered ones I want. The smaller the number is, the more important the heading is. So an H1 is going to be our biggest and boldest heading. And I'm going to write and refresh. And you can see there that my heading is huge, just like my very own head here. But it's massive and it's on the page in the style of a heading. If I wanted a subheading then, I'd bring it in as an H2. And refreshing it brings it in in a smaller font. Now notice there's a bit of a gap between headings by default. That's great. That's that's what should be happening. At this point, I'm going to pause and just tell you that indentation in HTML does not matter. Your editor will try and indent your code for you to make it nicer and easier to read later. In actual fact, unlike Python, the indents don't matter. You can indent or unindent to your heart's content here. As long as you have the opening and closing tags, you're good. So what about some actual text then? Well, actual text is a paragraph, which means our tags to put text in are going to be P tags. P tags involve lines and lines of text. Now, if I refresh this, we'll see the text appear. Notice that it's in a default font in a default size. I haven't yet given it any styling options and we're not for this lesson. We'll look at styling options in tomorrow's lesson. For now, Yours might look slightly different depending upon the default settings you have on your web browser. And this is particularly important if your default language is a right to left language because all the text that's popping out should be aligned the opposite way. Of course, we can add another heading in here and a bit more text. And again, I can keep refreshing here just to check things are working out as we want. But the next thing you might want to do is put an image in. And this is a little bit different. You can't just copy and paste an image into a web page. It doesn't work like a Word document. It doesn't even work like our brilliant markdown implementation on Replit. You have to put the image somewhere, give it a name that ideally doesn't have any spaces in it, and then link to it. So let's do that. So the first thing we're going to do is drag our image from our desktop or our folder over to our files pane. You'll see it lights up in blue to show that I'm about to drop it there. Now my image has a stupid name, so I'm going to rename it to something a bit more descriptive. And you'll notice the extension there, .jpg is important. So I've left that alone. Your image might be something else. It might be a PNG, it might be a GIF or GIF, depending upon your predilection for pronouncing it. I prefer GIF. But depending on what image you've got, your extension is important to what's gonna happen next. I'm gonna go in in the place where I want my image to exist. And notice I'm not in P tags here, it's not text. I could do that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. It's a standalone image I want. And I'm gonna add my tag, IMG. An image tag is interesting because it doesn't have a closing tag. Everything about the image will be in this one tag here. So I now need to tell it where that image is. So I'm gonna use SRC, which is short for source, equals and quotes. Inside those quotes is where I'm going to write the name of the file, including the extension. So picard.jpg. Close your tag. Refresh your page. Ooh, that picture is a little bit big. All we're seeing is Captain Picard's finger, which is lovely. Don't get me wrong. Patrick Stewart, you got lovely hands. But this is a gallery of baldies, not a gallery of fingers. Let's make that image a little bit smaller. Inside the tag, I can add more arguments to an image. I can add more parts. One of these is going to be width. So I'm going to set the width to be about 30%. And I could give numbers in there in pixels or in centimeters, whatever you want. Bit small, let's go for 50%. And you'll see here the default behavior is to resize the width and the height and keep the proportions. If I wanted to stretch it out, I can add another argument for height and manually control that as well. But I've got my first baldy in there, so let's let's pop a name underneath. If I refresh, it's all going in. Again, at this point, I'm not doing the design. I'm just putting the page elements in to show you how they work. 
Now maybe the next thing I want to do is provide a list of the bullet points about what makes Captain Picard such a great baldy. Well, let's try that. Now a list needs a tag around it. There are two kinds of lists. There's an ordered list, which is a list that has numbers on it, one, two, three, four, five, or an unordered list, a list that has bullet points on it. I'm gonna go for an unordered list, which is a UL tag, but if you just change that to OL, it'll automatically give each list item a number. Each item in my list has a tag as well, so we're tagging inside a tag here, which is LI, or as in a list item. So the first reason why Captain Picard is a legend is because he's a beautiful bald man. Let's put that in. My next reason will be, let's refresh and see what that looks like. Here we go. So I've got a list and you notice there's a bit of space surrounded by default. And because I've said it's an unordered list, they're going to be bullet points. If I change that code to be an ordered list or an OL, and I refresh, instead of bullet points, we're going to have numbers. I prefer the bullet points. Now we can combine those together to build a page as we want, but there's one thing missing, and that is linking. One thing to note is your files are going to get quite messed up if you put all your images and all your web pages in the same folder. So a nice thing to do is create a folder called images and pop your images in there. The problem with that is if I refresh now, that image is going to show up because I've told it to look in the main folder for picard.jpg and in fact it's in images slash picard that's how we reference folders so we're going to do images and we are going to do a forward slash this time i know windows users you'll be desperate to do a backslash but it's a forward slash for websites and if we refresh that we get our image back the last thing we need to look at is how we link pages to other pages on the internet and other pages in our own site let's very quickly make a new page now it's important that ideally you don't give any file names of images or web pages spaces. It does mess things up a little bit on some browsers and on some web servers. Now in there, I'm just going to create a very simple page. And in the body, which is the visible part, I'm just going to put in one heading just so we know it's going to work. Now, no amount of refreshing is going to get me to that page, unfortunately, to see what it looks like. So what I need to do is I need to make a link to it. I'm going to create a paragraph and inside there, I'm going to create a link, go to page two. Let's refresh it and see what that looks like at the moment. So at the moment, it's a bit of text, but I can't click it. Let's turn it into a working hyperlink. What I need to do for that is I need to surround the text I want to turn into a link. And this works for images as well, but surround the tags, surround the items I want to turn into a link in A tags. A is short for anchor. I said anchor. Everything between those two tags has now been anchored together in a group. If I refresh that, you'll see it doesn't look any different. And that's because my first A tag, like image, has an argument to it. It has a second part, and that is href. href is short for hyperlink reference and will tell you the page you're going to. Now, if the page is local, in this case, it's in the same folder, I can just put the name down, baldies2.html. HTML. If I refresh, that will turn that into a link. And if I click that link, it'll take me to page two. Happy days. What about if it's an external site on the web? Well, let's imagine that we're linking to a page about Picard. Let's wrap it in anchor tag straight away. I'm going to add in the href. And it's important here that we include the full website address including the HTTP bar. Now I'm going to link to a website that is all about this fictional character. I'm going to paste the full website address in there. Notice the first part, the HTTP or the HTTPS part is necessary to link to an external website because that's the bit that tells the link, you are going somewhere else, mate. You're not looking in the folder. If I don't have that, it's going to look in the folder for that file, which it won't find. If I refresh, we've got a link now that won't work in the in browser view, but if we pop out the full website and I click it, it will take us to the actual website. Okay, your crash course in HTML is sorted, but what are some common problems that you might see? 
One of the most common problems is this. It's something we've just talked about. I've left the HTTPS bit off the link here. And when I click it, it just says it's not found. And the reason for that is without the HTTP bit, it just looks for that file, in this case, in a folder called that, with this file name, in my website. That doesn't exist. So we need to always make sure that we've got the HTTPS bit in a link to get that to work. Another common problem is this. Everything looks all right with my images, but it's not loading. What's wrong? Well, I've forgotten the extension. You must make sure that we tell the computer the full path name of the image. Otherwise, it just won't show it for us in the page. Okay, here's a really common problem. What's happened here? I've got nearly everything as an H1. And the reason for that is I haven't closed the tag. My H1 tag hasn't been closed at all. And if that's the case, each tag is basically saying, look, everything from this point forward is one of me. And if you forget to close a tag, it'll last for ages. The same is true of a link. If I forget to close the A tag, which is part of the link, everything after that point becomes a link itself. And you can end up with entire web pages turned into one massive super link. As usual, I've broken some web page code. Go and investigate and see if you can get my web page rendering properly. Your challenge today then, well, I'd like you to go and start making a portfolio out of all the code you've done for the last 72 days. No, not all of it, that's gonna be masses. But I'd like you to pick five of the projects you're particularly pleased with or that you're particularly proud of. And I'd like you to make a little portfolio. I'd like you to make a web page with the title, My Portfolio. I'd like you to put the heading on there with your name and the word portfolio on it. I'd like a second level heading for each of the days you're going to showcase. I'd like a paragraph tag in each where you tell me about what was good about that particular day. I'd like an image of each of your REPLs and I'd like you to link that image directly to the REPL URL so the user can go to your cover page and see your code. When you're done, publish it on the community and use the hashtag REPLIT100 days of code to make sure that we all get to see it and share in your amazing work. Tomorrow, we're gonna stop being bored at this black text on white background kind of page, and we're gonna move on to CSS and how to style your page nicely.